The truth is that every power, no matter how amazing, is loaded with trouble of the worst kind. It would have been nice if someone had let me in on the joke 13 days ago. Things would have been a lot easier for me. This is how it went down, or at least how I remember it. I don't have a superhuman memory, but I can tell you this much for sure. I killed a guy, maybe two, possibly three. I have one power, not two or three or four, just one. I met a girl and she changed everything. I've been thinking about writing a superhero kind of a novel for a long time. That was something that was real important to me when I was in high school. I loved comic books, things like Fantastic Four and Spider-Man, the Hulk, those kind of things. So when I began thinking about the idea of a superhero novel, um, I, it immediately pointed to my time as a high school. I went to a small high school, and so we were really stuck with each other. And so the idea of having like a leg up on people sometimes when I was that age, that was very appealing. And so this idea of being totally indestructible, um, I would have put that to a lot of use when I was in high school, I think, for a lot of reasons. At the beginning of 13 Days to Midnight, Jacob Fielding, a 15-year-old high school kid, has just had a, a really horrible car accident. But he comes out of it without a scratch on him. He's been thrown through the windshield 20 feet. He stands up, he's totally fine. And within a few days, he realizes that something's not right. He, he has become completely indestructible. Nothing can harm this kid. The twist in this story comes when Jacob realizes that he can actually loan this power out. He doesn't have to keep it for himself. So imagine being able to hand your best friend the power of being indestructible. And it sounds pretty cool when you talk about it, but to actually do it, um, your best friend might have different ideas. Your girlfriend might have different ideas about how you would use this power. So there's a real moral dilemma in this story for Jacob because the longer he has this power of indestructibility, the more he realizes he has to make all the tough choices and the burden just gets heavier and heavier as the story goes on. Every great superhero story also has a, a sort of timeless love story. And in 13 Days to Midnight, the stakes are incredibly high. So much so that Jacob actually has to decide whether he's willing to kill the one he loves in order to save her. And the Northwest winter really sets the tone for the whole story. So not just the, you know, every day it's raining in the dreary high school and the Oregon coast with its low clouds, but also this really interesting bookstore called Coffin Books. It's got a lot of shadows and it's a lot of creepy corners and, and weird little places to sit. And that's where they plot out all their strategy for how they're going to use this power. I usually spend about three hours a day, every day, writing, and usually in the morning. And I always listen to music. For this one, I mean, I grew up in the Northwest, so grunge music is kind of in my blood, and it matches the tone of the story so perfectly that I would just put on headphones and crank it about as loud as I could. Just keep listening to that music until there really wasn't even any music. It was just a feeling I had, and it fit the book perfectly. Writing 13 Days to Midnight reminded me of how tough it can be to be in high school, and just how love, death, you know, sacrifice, all those things are so intense uh, when you're that age. And I hope viewing that time through the lens of a superhero story will help readers relate to these characters and the challenges they face.